again, thank you all for joining. Um, this month, we have um, Lori Hybe from um, Keystone Click, who is going to chat with us about her process for nurturing um, guests of her podcast. Um, we'll get to that in just a second. As I shared earlier, um, the format of this call, we're going to have about um, 10, 15 minutes of hearing from Lori on her process. And then we will go ahead and open it up to questions. And that can be anything on um, what you may have heard from Lori, follow up, how we can um, customize that for your own brand. And then we can also dig into other relationship building topics that maybe we've tapped on previously, or you wanna bring up um, for ideating on how we can create some um, unique experiences for your brand. So, um, about to turn this over to Lori. She and I, I don't know, we've been connected probably for, I'm going on seven years in business and Lori and I met really early. Um, and she was a client, she came to us um, and actually asked us to help uh, create some experiences for her podcast nurturing that we'll get into here. And um, all right, let me just, there's a couple more people joining. Let me do that. So um, let me go ahead. We used to actually give a talk together on this nurturing process. <laughs> so it's very fitting that we can um, jump back into this. And I'm sorry, the uh, the mail pickup is happening while we're chatting. <laughs> um, so Lori, I will hand it over to you to um, dig in. All right. Um, yeah, so Jamie and I definitely uh, had this We've presented this talk um, numerous times to like, I think it was Wisconsin's podcast annual event that took place and a number of networking groups, um, but it was all around um, how to nurture your audience um, through podcasting, actually. So um, a lot of people were fascinated with it, but um, my system is actually very simple. Uh, I'm a huge fan of having multiple mediums to engage someone. So, um, and I use this a lot when it came to um, uh, identifying who my target audience is and figuring out who I want to start doing business with. Um, I actually learned a lot of this from, you know, Stephen and Eric. So um, kudos to them for, for um, that philosophy of, you know, your top, top 25 that you're pursuing. Um, but then also during the sales process, if I was in uh, kind of a proposal bidding match and myself and, you know, one or two other agencies, if I said, hey, you know what, why don't I get you on my podcast and just kind of give you a little taste of what it's like to to work with us. I mean, that just kind of sealed the deal automatically because I got to spend so much more time with that person as opposed to um, every other agency that was kind of pitching the business. But when I would have someone on my show, the first thing that I would do after the podcast was recorded, not even published yet, but recorded is we actually filled out a spreadsheet that um, Jamie's team had access to with the um, the guest, uh, the date that it was going to go live, their mailing address, and then a quote from the show that they said that Jamie then would actually quickly design a fun little uh, image. She would mail, um, package up into a frame and then mail along with a thank you, a handwritten thank you card. And that's, that's her specialty for sure. Um, and that was sent out at different segments of time. While simultaneously, I had an email drip happening. Um, there were seven different emails that would happen over the course of about eight weeks. Um, just first thanking them for being on the show, giving them a heads up and when they could anticipate the show going live. So this was all automated based on the trigger of the go live date for the show. So they knew when to anticipate it going live, the date it went live, about a week after it went live, um, adding value, um, educating them on how to reuse the content from the show for their own marketing efforts. Um, and then uh, some of the top targets, Jamie would actually send a second gift about a month after the fact, kind of acknowledging that the um, is a thank you again. Um, I think that was, I know we stopped doing that, but it was like a, a nurturing, like a plant or something, right? Like a seed or something yeah. encouraging them to grow. So I know I haven't done that one as frequently, um, but that worked out really well. Um, so 
leveraging digital so they would get posted on social media it was in our newsletter they would get emails from me in their inbox automatically and then they would get the snail mail so multiple mediums touching them advocating for them um being showing them that i cared about the message that they shared on my podcast to my audience um i tracked all of this and it can it led to 27 percent conversion um of, of my business. So 27% of the people that I had on my show ended up um, giving dollars to my business. And that else. was over the course of a year where mm -hmm. she did weekly interviews. So if you think about that conversion rate, right, for a year's time frame and the amount of people that, you know, went through that process, it's incredible. And what I, you know, we're, we're big fans of, you know, we're such a heavy digital um, we're in such a heavy digital age, right? And and it's very important that you have both the digital and the physical touch points um, because you're going to be able to share information digitally, some of your smarts that way. And, and Lori really did a good job with her um, email drip series of sharing a little bit more of her smarts throughout that time. And then, you know, in the mail, they receive something tangible that really triggers that emotional connection. So. Well, and, and something that I didn't anticipate is these really cool um, framed quotes, which I, I know kind of have exploded a bit in a positive way, but someone would post that on their social media and tag me in it. So it was additional exposure for me and my brand and in a positive light, someone else's audience is seeing something kind that, um, you know, my organization did for them too. So even added exposure that was not anticipated initially. And, you know, I was in live events in rooms where people actually would bring up that they received this oh, gift from right. Lori. I forgot about that. <laughs> so so <laughs> bring it to the networking event right. to show it off, which I thought was really cool too. Right. So the word of, look at, there's uh, Melissa's at, <laughs> Melissa's holding <laughs> hers up. <laughs> Yay. And how, how long ago was that too? That's the other thing. It stays on your, in your office, on your desk. Yeah, I mean, it, it stays. It's really nice and polished and they're proud of it. I mean, I've received them from being on other people's shows and I display them in my office. I love it. Right. Um, mine's yeah, out of reach. It, it, yeah, you, you, you know, <laughs> subtle, subtle branding, more emphasis on them. But you know, people are yep. going to come to the office and or in in their office, they're going to see it. They're proud of it. You know, if you if you don't um, invest the dollars in it, so it's something that what they want to have proudly displayed in their office. I think that's really important too. So one of the reasons, and we actually just did a, a video just went out yesterday in our newsletter, one of the reasons that this works really well, um, when people are creating relationships with you, they want to know three things. They want to know that you understand them, that you validate them or acknowledge them, and that you care. So a gift right away shows you care, but you're quoting something smart they said, so you are validating them right there. Right. And that's one of the reasons that's very lasting. And I think that that forms some strong relationships for her. Um, now, I know not everybody, uh, a show of hands, like on the call, who has their own podcast? Yeah, I know Nicole, Eric, right, Maggie. Had two. Okay. Yeah, she, <laughs> she just keeps going. <laughs> okay, but I want to point out that this can also work if you are a guest and there is a host that is possibly a great um, connection for you to nurture. Think about it. Hosts have communities for their podcast, right? They have other people they can connect you with. So wouldn't it make sense in the reverse to nurture that relationship as well? Like you could do a very similar thing by sending afterwards a thank you for allowing me to be a guest, along with some additional touch points of your own. I want to share that you can also do this if you do an interview series in any form, like a, a blog. Um, I don't, I do a blog, so I interview people um, for my blog series. Um, what's his name? Henry, our friend Henry DeVries uh, does Forbes. I have one of his frames back here from the Forbes article, right? So there's lots of um, applications for this. Um, that, that, you know, you can kind of twist it to fit your own needs. So, um, why don't we go ahead and open it up now? Nicole, Nicole also does a series of touch points similar. She does a frame. 
Um, and then I think there's some material that goes out with your, um, is it your research? Yeah, we keep, uh, we keep building it. Thanks to Susan Bayer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we do, uh, we do the quote and then we do a book, which that's out of the predictive, um, predictives, uh, game plan recipe. Um, so we send a book from Steve Farber called the radical leap. It's a leadership book. Um, I just got someone who emailed me earlier this week it was like another surprise was the subject, uh, subject line. thanking me for the book. And then we were trying to figure out how to extend the, the touch points. And I realized we have this awesome research that we've done with Susan. Um, so we created with the help of the expressory, um, oh, look, you have it. That was their idea. It was your idea. You probably don't. Um, and uh, it's got our logo on the front. It says collaboration toolkit on the side. Our research is all around collaboration. And then inside is our um, research. Uh, and then also some of the other um, pieces of thought leadership that we've generated off of the research, like a, oh, a checklist and um, a guide to becoming a better collaborator and things like that. So we just released released our second research study this month, and um, I just had my assistant reach out to Carrie at the Expressory probably yesterday <laughs> yeah. to say, okay, how do we get this next uh, set of research into the hands of besides the besides the digital into the hard copy um, binders? So that's what we've been doing to just continue to build our nurture funnel right. and build the touch points. See, again, it's that physical, right? The unexpected, the surprise, oh, one more thing. And we're more likely to engage with it. I can sit down with it kind of thing. Um, yeah, Susan. Yeah, I love this. So we have a video series, it's been dormant for a little while, but it's yeah. coming back up on YouTube. So it's not a podcast per se, but this time around, we're periodically going to have guests join us oh, for yeah. it to talk about this. Um, and I, um, you know, I, I, I get on a lot of podcasts, which is lovely and I have the frames and that's all great and they're lovely, but I, for me, you know, we've been working together for a while and I, I like to give things that are a little different. Yeah. <laughs> to say yeah. The, 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 the slam on your desk, damn it dolls for Christmas mm -hmm. were a classic and I keep getting <laughs> feedback uh, from folks on those. Yeah, there. See, Eric's got his damn it doll. Um, right. So so I'm wondering, like, I love the personalization of the plaque, that it's something that is specific to their appearance. And I do love that validation element. So I wonder what else we could do that isn't a plaque, but still has those same characteristics um, that they would keep around and, you know, take a photo of and feel was special, mm -hmm. um, but that would, but would look a little different from maybe the kinds of things that they're getting from, uh, other, other guests that they're having. Yeah. I don't want so, to put you on the spot, but you usually are pretty good at yeah. coming up with stuff that's different. Well, <laughs> and one of the, the reasons that you're fun to work with is because your personality comes through in a lot of this stuff. And so for us, we're always going to start with, what is your subject and your theme? The way Lori um, talked about this secondary gift that come up, came up for her, um, the, the growing, um, it was an encore gift, right? And it is, I think, an encore presentation yeah, is what we yeah, called yeah. it. And it and the theme was related to continued growth or there, were, there was something in that flavor. So the work you do making you know it would depend on on what kind of conversation you're having with these people the theme of the the talk the work you do with your market research you talk about making um making research fun right making math that would be, fun and that would be it like not intimidating and when we when we send gifts to clients and stuff like that they're sort of irreverent board games or you know stuff like that it's all yep. there's a fun f -bombs. To all of it f bombs <laughs> right shade <crocheted F -bombs laughs> that you can throw at your spouse or coworkers or just uh, the dog <laughs> um so what what i think the line you know we'd go down there's this this second piece of why those quote cards work really well and it's because it's a reminder of a shared experience and mm -hmm. so talking with you being fun um, you know, bring when when we can give a gift that brings up the reminder of the great conversation yeah. you had, 
that's where the engagement's going to come in. So um, we would look, I don't know that I have a great example this time offhand. But we could um, find something but, fun that we could personalize for their appearance. Right. I would imagine we well, could come up with something. Now, and when you think about it, okay, we had a talk, we were on a TV show or we were on a podcast. Is there like a little fun microphone stand? Is there something mm -hmm. that you know, you could kind of brand like, hey, it was great talking with you. I mean, there's lots of different angles we could take on that end where it doesn't have to stick to the quote. The bottom line is yeah. you're showing up with a reminder. Yeah, and, I like that. And it's something that um, could uh, increase the engagement, right? Um, mm -hmm. I see Jen is, is mentioning that she does a charitable donation. Oh, that's nice. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Good ideas. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. Of course. Yes, Eric, you're on mute. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. So we've uh we've done a bunch of different things as far as kind of the nurture and and follow-up. Uh so obviously we we did have done the plaques, we have done books. One one quick note for anybody that is going to send books um through our testing, I'd really recommend you send a note along with it that says mm -hmm. this is the age or the chapter you should read in the book not just here's homework go read a book mm -hmm. uh, so that makes it a lot more thoughtful and it really doesn't add a whole lot more uh much more work um we have done the the binders and the research much like nicole um and so that was that was fun to be able to send that out it was a blast um we also uh do long-form linkedin posts where we we call out the guest uh it's a really simple again not expensive way to to uh engage with them right. um we usually focus or we highlight them in a newsletter and then we don't just make sure that um you know they're on the newsletter list we actually take the newsletter and we forward it to them and say hey we just wanted to let you know uh we love the conversation so much we wanted to feature you in in this week's newsletter so that they can uh, get that that works really well again relatively uh inexpenses uh, inexpensive yeah um, we printed ebooks um and sent those along in nice packaging as well so a lot of you if you have assets already so nicole i know you mentioned like kind of putting it all in the binder uh, we've done both the binder and then we've done separate pieces as well um, to kind of run some tests on those things. Um, and then actually doing uh, research or articles from someone else is a pretty good way uh, as well. It seems self-serving, but if it's appropriate for the person, um, that's a that's a great way to to reach out. And then we've done, uh, we did flags for a short period of time. One of the things that we say a lot of is uh, plant your flag. Yeah. Uh, authority. Um, and then, uh, but what, what we found was the, uh, the flags that we were able to get uh, at that point, Jamie, were like four <laughs> feet by like three feet. They were just these <laughs> massive, they the covered wall. an entire wall. <laughs> um, but what we would do is we would, we would actually put in their, their company logo and we'd put in their, uh, their statement. Uh, their positioning statements that oh, they can cool. see how they're planting their flag. Um, and then you can also do custom t-shirts. I uh, really love the the charity idea. Um, so, so Susan, as far as like the t-shirt the stuff, because I know you will do uh, like you did the hats for us, you've done t-shirts and things like that. Um, again, I, I, I don't remember what the cost was to have it in, put the quote on a t-shirt instead of on a plaque, um, but that's another way to do it. And again, kind of mixed, right? Do you want to put on something where you're like, look at me, I'm so smart. Some people do, some people don't. Um, so again, we've just, we've done a lot of different uh, small things to see, uh, to see what we get as far as reactions go. Um, and, and uh, so far, all of these have, have worked. Um, so anyway, just food, just food for thought. Um, boy, there were so many, I had thoughts along the way. Hold on. Sorry. Um, no. I, uh, I didn't really pause there. <laughs> oh, the book messaging works really well, right? Mm -hmm. The the specific topic. Yes. Um, I like leveraging someone else's research too, if it's applicable, right? Now you're pulling in a new connection for them. You're being even more re um, resourceful. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, 
the way that we look at it is a gift has to be something that they are delighted by and surprised by, but ideally it is also something that is helpful and they have a reason to keep around. So yeah. the examples of like the plaque we just mentioned, right? I mean, I've got a plaque on my wall, right? And Melissa was able to bring up her plaque. Right. We tend to keep those things around. Uh, the research binders uh, that you mentioned, Nicole, we tend to keep those things around, especially if you've gone through beforehand and like highlighted sections that the person should be paying attention to because it, it had to do with the conversation. All these things add a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, but they also make the the gift that you got that much more thoughtful and that much more useful. And if it's useful, it means it's going to stick around their desk. Well, and I think too, at some point you've mailed out enough of those that you could almost do another invite for all the people that you mailed those to. Hey, let's get together and have a Q and A. Let's have a conversation about how you made use of that. What questions you might have, right? And it could be another touch point. You yeah, know you've mailed them to. Uh, events are definitely something um, we we have not done an alumni a podcast alumni specific event. Yeah. Um, but that is something that we have worked with some of our clients on. Um, and and so um, depending on on how tightly they are aligned with their guests, it works really well. If they're not really tightly aligned with their guests, it can be a bit of a tough sell to get people to to attend. So just something right. to keep in mind when it comes to events. Right. Um, One of our um, clients does something unique. Like when he schedules people to be on it, because you're usually scheduling your guests in advance, right? Mm -hmm. He mails a couple weeks before a door hanger that says, keep quiet in in production or something like that but it's like hey getting them excited that you're going to be on the show um so i love the little like teaser right it's a it's a pre um touch point and then i did see someone i don't i mean i thought it was clever it's not exactly my favorite because it's a little self-serving but i get it um after the fact she sent a thank you gift with a postcard that is meant to be like you take a picture with the postcard and it says mm -hmm. that, hey, I'm a guest on blah, blah, blah. And it's all her branding. Um, it was cool because it encouraged the sharing, right? So I thought that was clever. Mm -hmm. um, I think you could do it a little bit more subtly. I think the gifts itself kind of encourage a little bit of um, word of mouth, but um, there's probably different ways to do that. But she wanted, it was like she was asking for, take a picture with the sign and then tag me in it. And so. The, the doorknob holder should say on air. Yeah. Like, that's what it should say. <laughs> True. There you go. I like that. Um, you know, as we're talking about like how to take things to the next level, I was thinking of something else that I do with my podcast guests that I realize a lot of people don't do this. It, even on my experiences being a guest in other people's show is when I've stopped the recording and, you know, I always tie up loose ends. And I always tell my guests before I hit the report record button, when I stop the recording, we'll have another minute or two to tie up loose ends. I invite them to do a one-on-one -on -one networking call with me. Like, Hey, this was great. I would like to continue the conversation. Can oh, we get I on like another call? That. You know, and I give them my calendar link right away, just for a quick 15 minutes, just so I can see how I can better help and serve you. So I'm going beyond you know, I've already created the foundation of, hey, we had a good conversation. I want to continue to help you. Um, and so there's always a next step. That's a rule that I just reinforce. There's always a next step. And it's another opportunity to then send another little thank you note. Hey, thanks for that quick 15 minute call. I learned a lot about you in that call and I can better. Yeah. Serve you. Oh, I like that. It immediately gets that moving. That's clever. Cool. cool. And then I don't know, like when you're speaking and stuff like that. Oh, Nicole, were you going to jump in? I actually I have a question. And I actually it's something else I wanted I could share, but I don't want to interrupt that train of thought. I actually had a question for Lori or anyone. Go for it. Go <laughs> um, for it. Well, I've been thinking about the quotes that we do and we send those out framed, but does anybody repurpose those and send them like use them in your social? I mean, I know we tell we want the guests to use them in their social, but that's I think one area that we're my team is not doing right now. So I'm curious what everybody else is doing with those. 
We, when we post on our social, we have our branding for the show and we stick to that where the quote is more tailored to the guest. So I think that's their opportunity to share. And if anything, you could also send them the image so that if they wanted to share it. Um, but we try to make the images that are in the frames tailored to this, to align with the quote, you know, if, you know, it's related to like climbing a mountain and then we'll have a mountain in the background or something, you know, so it's more tailored to them. I was wondering about um, not to promote the actual show they were on, but just like as like future, you know, just a, a post, like an inspirational post. Right. Just um, its own quote. Yeah. Sure, you could. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever done that? Oh, sorry. Go we ahead, Megan. In the newsletter, too. We haven't been doing it. We need to get better at doing that again, but mm -hmm. we were including the quote card in the newsletter with a little blip about the episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also makes good call outs in blog posts and show notes and things sure. along those lines. You can do click to tweet uh, buttons where uh, the quotable moment is something that they can just click and then it automatically creates a a tweet for someone uh, with that quote. There's There are definitely uses for it, but uh, to your point, Nicole, most of those have to do with episode specific, not necessarily how do we take and collect those and turn them into something after the fact as an aggregate. So really an interesting idea, depending on what quotes you gathered, if they were inspirational enough you could definitely do a series like that if they were um you know controversial or surprising um that would kind of lend itself to a different theme or if you had a lot of informational or data-driven quotes um mm -hmm. that could be really interesting too because you could say basically yes. like a year of surprising stats right well that's mm -hmm. fun you're almost thinking like ebooks or something yeah, like that could be a little ebook that'd be fun right we did early on in our show when we hit our hundredth episode, it was a huge heavy lift, but we made these little notebooks and we pulled oh. one quote from every show from our first 100. And then we sent these little notebooks out to all of our first 100 podcast oh. guests. People love them. I still have them. I have the visit right here. So, That's I mean, I awesome. still, and every page has a different quote on it, but um, that was a huge heavy lift. So we, and we don't do quotes for every single guest, obviously, anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, but maybe there's something else to that because people loved it. They still talk about these little notebooks. Um, that would be inspirational, especially when you're featured in it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that a um, lot. Coffee table book yeah. too, right? Like. Yeah. I mean, this is a notebook. We called it Destination Marketing Inspiration. And so you would you know, like we were, would hope people would, so it's just a lined page with a quote at the bottom or at the top. Um, but, um, and then I take them like on new client and, or, you know, when I'm going out to meet a prospect yeah. or whatever, you bring a gift, I would bring those. Um, but one other thing I just wanted to share, one thing we do with our show is we go to different, um, oh, trade shows. So I'm in travel and tourism and we go to um, statewide tourism shows. We go to national tourism shows. And we take the show on the road. And I'll interview anywhere from 10 to 20 people at the show and produce a series that's two to three episodes long. And then we do quotes for every single one of those interviews. Um, but one of the kind of added benefits of that is the relationships that we're building with the associations, not just the prospects that we're gaining mm -hmm. from doing it that way and um we actually put the association logo on the quote um oh. that we send them so it has um you know the quote the person's name our our branding and then the show branding so they remember where they met us but it also um you know it's added benefit to that association now they're up on that person's wall too right um, and so we've had a we've had really good luck with um getting into shows without having to pay oh <laughs> um, really or, yeah, or we pay, maybe we pay just the registration fee, but we get a free table because we're doing the show, the podcast. It depends. Um, but yeah, we were successful in getting a double booth at two shows we were just at recently because of the podcast that we would have never had um, or been Lori, able to really afford. <laughs> Lori, that so, seems like a, a great yeah. idea for your manufacturing one on the road, you know? Yeah, we were talking about that, actually, what what shows to go to. There's so many manufacturing shows out there. Um, 
but you know we're really leaning into like the women in manufacturing conversation oh, so. yeah. yeah didn't you do a podcast at, at a show one time uh right yeah that was COVID? for social capital yeah um yeah. there's a local biz expo in milwaukee we actually set up our booth was a podcast rest- recording studio basically which yeah. was fun it pulled people in yeah you know they were curious what was happening <laughs> yeah that's clever i like it these are great ideas. Um, my comment earlier was just going to be along the lines of if you think about when you're speaking, right, when you go places and you're speaking, if you somehow, if you're connecting with um, good um, contacts there, um, could you, could there be like a, a series of touch points following up from that? Like it was great to meet you at this event. I liked our short conversation whatever it was about. I mean, you, there's probably a lot of work that you've got to do to make sure you're following up correctly. But um, again, these are relationships worth nurturing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Any other questions or ideas this morning? <laughs> I know it's a lot to think about. Yeah. I love these ideas. I'm like, <clears throat> I mean, I have other work to do, but now all I want to do is Think about ideas like this. Right. <laughs> so lots right. of good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> now, Henry couldn't be here today. He was, um, he's another one. He does a TV show um, and then a YouTube and then also with his Forbes column, right? As he interviews people, um, mm-hmm. you know, why, why aren't, isn't that something that you're making use of for further follow-ups and, and um, deeper connections? Um, and then his show as well. Now he, his, his recording goes, Susan, you, you get posted on YouTube, right? And then I think there's a, um, subsequent newsletter about it. Um, and obviously social posts and stuff like that. But, um, again, I know these are all nurturing opportunities for him. And the thing is, you got to remember, even if it's not exactly a client, right? they open up doors for other opportunities. Remember yeah. you're, you're nurturing communities in some cases. Yeah. It's Pam Slim's widest net model. Like, right. Who, who, who can help you reach the people you're trying to help, right. even if they're not your ideal client. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're watering holes. <laughs> so Great. Well, if we're out of questions, we can certainly uh, give you back some of your time. Um, Next month, we have uh, Henry DeVries will be talking with us about um, marketing with a book. And we have some fantastic stats around um, because I get a lot of questions around, well, should I really pay for my like for shipping the whole thing for free? Should I cover that? Oh, that's too expensive. Um, but but some of Henry's authors have hundreds of thousands of dollars in return from sending these books. And so we'll hear some, um, we'll talk about some great suggestions on how to market leveraging the book um, and also, again, continued nurturing. So um, hopefully some of you can make that. You know what? If you're interested, it's April 11th at the same time, um, 10 to 11 Central. And if you'd like, we can go ahead and just register you if you want to put in the chat, register me. I can take care of that for you. So you don't have to dig that up. Um, And then we'll also send out, obviously, follow up. Um, Thank you. But any any other questions, ideas we want to talk about? Otherwise, yes. Thank you so much, Lori, for, for sharing your process and everybody else for um, the ideas and conversation. I appreciate your time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, that was a great, a great call. This is Thanks. awesome. All right. Take care. Thanks for hosting. Bye, everyone. Thanks.